I want to just give a, an overview, and um, I certainly haven't practiced this, so uh, sticking to the uh, 20 second rule, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge uh, two of my colleagues that are here tonight, uh, Karen Pannebecker and Nancy Scanlon, and um, to say that the work we do is part of a, a team effort. I want to use as an example Lynch syndrome. So Henry Lynch, he works at Creighton University, maybe 35 or 40 years ago, was convinced that uh, the, um, there was a predisposition to a, a malignancy in individuals who had colon cancer. And that was not accepted by the majority of physicians at that time, and he stuck to his guns. And I, eventually, a gene mutation was identified in a small subset, maybe three out of every 100 colon cancers. And within those families, it's very important that those mutations uh, were identified. So this syndrome was named after uh, Henry Lynch and involves, was found to involve a set of genes, as in many cancer families, that decrease the function of DNA damage, surveillance, and repair, and led to cancers of several different tissues, primarily of the colon, endometrium, and then lesser, to a lesser extent of stomach, ovary, and other, and other tissues. We can use the family cancer history to give an idea of who may be carrying this type of gene, and that's the work we do in the Cancer Genetics Unit at the London Health Sciences Center, where family physicians will refer uh, cases such as this, where we're getting quite obviously abnormal a pattern of cancers and uh, at a very young age and involving the particular cancers that we see within Lynch syndrome, such as st stomach cancer, as I've mentioned, colon cancer at a young age, and endometrial cancer, that gives us a very good idea of which genes we, we should be looking for in, in, this, uh, in this sort of situation. Obviously, we're going to get families where we uh, strongly suspect a cancer because of terrible family history, and yet we do not find a, a mutation. And we can use uh, computer programs to assess the family cancer history, and by using empiric data, um, there are computer programs that will assess the likelihood of, of cancers occurring in individuals where we haven't found a mutation. This is just a slide really outlining uh, the father of all of this work, who is Bert Vogelstein, who identified sets of genes that go wrong and lead to malignancy. And here are the four main actors in the DNA mismatch repair uh, um, complex that lead to disease. And we can screen for these uh, four genes, for the proteins coded for them, by using immunohistochemistry, and it gives us a very quick screen. When we get a tumor tissue, we can use a, an immunostain that costs maybe $75, and we can identify uh, those families where mutations are likely to be found. So here we have Watson and Crick's uh, uh, DNA uh, helix, the, do the double helix. And I just wanted to do a quick show and tell uh, of how this works. So here we have the beaded necklace of the DNA, and here we have a replication fork with, uh, uh, with a protein moving through the DNA and copying the, the lagging strands. When DNA is going to be used to make a protein, uh, the, it's copied to an, uh, an intermediate, a very similar sort of single-stranded RNA that, that can be read by the cell in this triplet code, as, as I've shown here. And here, the type of mutation that we often find within tumor uh, suppressor genes are frame shift or nonsense mutations. But here I've given an example of a frame shift. And you can see that the way that the, the, you might read this in a triplet code and you insert a, an extra base and you get a frame shift that causes a nonsense. And that's the type of mutation that the mismatch repair genes are, are, uh, supposed, are working to, to uh, repair. And here we have, just as a wind-up, uh, another family. All these families are, are ones that we have found here in the, in the Health Sciences Center. Colon cancer, for reasons we're not clear, um, is less. Uh, we're not finding all the patients that we know are out there. Uh, but we, when we do find them, we, we, uh, we are obviously going to follow them more closely, uh, primarily with uh, colonoscopy and uh, 
close gynecologic surveillance for the, for the women who carry these mutations. And so that gives a, a very brief overview. I could spend half an hour or even an hour with you, but that'll do. Thank you. Thank you.